Well, you asked for it. In fact, many of you asked for it. So here it is. A review of the Ramps 1.6. Now, don't let the 1.6 fool you. This isn't an official iteration. It's just what Big Tree Tesh... Tesh? I keep doing that. Big Tree Tech slash BQ is calling this board. If it were an official iteration, there would actually be design files online because that's all open source. As it is, there is no data on this, so it made my life a little bit difficult. You'll see, I had to do a bit of searching and reverse engineering and still didn't come up with answers to a couple questions I had. I also, because of manufacturing problems, was not able to do a powered up driver's in test of this. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna have any test prints or anything like that. You'll see why in the video. And I feel bad because it feels a little bit incomplete. I was hoping to do this from beginning to end, print a bunch of things and then take it apart and test the little giblets on it like I did in the, the um, Rams comparison video. But at least I can get enough information out there that you can make an informed decision on your own so you're not just buying something sight unseen and you know what you might expect. So without further ado, let's do it. So the Rams 1.6 is Big Tree Tech's next iteration on the surface mount design they started with the 1.5. By using the double D-pack MOSFETs, they were able to use the actual board as a heat sink with thermal vias and little patches like this on the back. And as you can see, it's fairly similar to the 1.5, with the exception of upgraded power connectors and an upgraded bed MOSFET. More on that later. Also in keeping with the 1.5, they did away with the poly fuses and replaced them with standard surface mount fuses. In addition to the board, you'll find a wide heat sink bar in the package, which conveniently has double-sided sticky tape already adhered to the back, as well as all the jumpers you'll need for the driver configuration. Now, the first thing you should do with any of these boards is scan all the pins for any bridging or cold solder joints. And fortunately, my board was pretty good in that department, though you can see where somebody probably cleaned up some sloppy solder with a spudger tool. But some other folks online were not so lucky, as you can see from this bridged joint right here. And a blob of solder in the wrong place, bridging two pins can ruin your drivers, they can ruin your Arduino, and they can ruin your day. So knowing that these boards occasionally have problems with voltage bleeding through on some of the signal pins, I usually do a, uh, at least a quick point to point check out with a multimeter. And wouldn't you know it that today my meter seems to be going on the fritz. Step one, change the battery. No difference. Step two, use the Microsoft user's number one tip. Turn it off and then turn it back on again. No difference. Unfortunately, on a multimeter, I couldn't employ the number one Windows 10 tech tip for when you're having problems, which is uninstall it and put Windows 7 back on. You know what I'm saying? So after my fine adjustment tool had no effect, I just took the stupid thing apart and fixed it. <laughs> All joking aside, the point to point test was fine. And I was able to determine that the D1 diode does feed the Arduino or backfeed, I should say, the Arduino from the ramp's power supply like it's supposed to. So if any of you are planning on running 24 volts, desoldering that or snapping it off should give you the ability to run two independent supplies, one for your Arduino and one for your ramp's board. Since they did away with the quick connect power connector, that's one point of failure that's gone, so that's good. But you still have to take care when you're wiring up your power supply that you don't have frayed cables, that you use the proper gauge, and preferably use string furls. And remember not to tin your wire tips before you put them into this style of clamp. Because of the rising spring clamp system, you will have problems with cold creep. You will lose contact resistance, or I should say increase contact resistance, and you will melt your connector. But as far as the connectors themselves, these claim to be rated at 300 volts, 20 amps, so it should be sufficient. Now, getting onto quality control and build quality, you can see here that the pins on the right that connect the board to the Arduino are a little bit crooked. I could probably force those in, but it's still not great. And what's even worse is that the headers where the drivers plug into are more crooked than a politician. There is definitely no getting a driver in that. Well, that kind of took the wind out of my sails because I wasn't gonna be able to do any actual print tests, but let's just go ahead and look at the components and dig through some data sheets. The selling point on this board, other than the connectors, is this big, beautiful bed MOSFET. Now, this is a Taiwanese brand that I'd never heard of, but I was able to dig up data on it, so hopefully that's at least, you know, ballpark accurate. The specs of this chip are actually pretty impressive, with an RDS on of 2.5 milliohms, 
which is almost as good as the MOSFET I suggested in my uh, MOSFET ramps video, but these have the additional benefit of being heat synced on the board. Now we're not actually gonna hit those numbers though, because unfortunately these are rated at 10 volts on the gate, as opposed to the slightly less than five volts that we usually have. And right around that voltage is where things start to skyrocket. But as long as we keep things in the over four and a half volts range, we should be pretty good. Now this is not an open source board, so we don't have a bill of materials for everything that's involved, which is a, a little bit annoying. I'll test what I can, but one problem is I have no idea what these fuses are other than the markings on them, which are a little bit vague. The Chenglish in the various product descriptions doesn't really help either. Apparently we have five amps of additional security and component protection fusion, as well as heated bed controls additional 11A fuses. But then again, they also say that their connectors are gold plated and have a rated current of 3A, which is very compact. And they're obviously not gold plated. And I don't know what very compact is supposed to refer to. But these are obviously some kind of standard 1206 fuses. So to try to unravel the mystery, I checked the markings visually and against the data sheets of several different manufacturers, including AVX, Little Fuse, Burns, Panasonic, Vichy, etc., etc., cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I couldn't really figure it out, except that T usually stands for five amps, so I can assume that. The fuse on the right is marked 30, which usually would mean three amps. Now, I'm pretty sure three is not 11, but it could be that it's a 30 amp fuse, I guess? But that would render it virtually useless because by the time you're pulling 30 amps, the damage is already done. Now, typically these fuses are either 24, 36, or 72 volt rated, most of them starting at 32, so I'm fairly confident with that. And we can also tell that the fuse on the left, the green one, is a stacked film fuse of some kind, and the one on the right is a ceramic fuse. Now, another seller description online claims that besides, the power of ramps 1.6 is more larger than ramps 1.5. The largest power will be up to or 270 watts. Now, I don't know about all that. 270 sounds a bit high. So if we put 270 in here for watts and we're talking about 12 volts, that would mean that our current would be 22.5 amps, which exceeds the current of the connector. I think it's probably gonna be closer to 240, 250. So if we put the maximum current of our connector in there at 20 and then leave it at 12 volts, we see that it is indeed 240 watts. So, I don't know. Plus, that's obviously going to exceed the fuse that they claim is supposed to be 11 amps, in which case we get 132 watts. And if we were to do 270 and then suck the maximum amount of current we can through this supposed 11 amp fuse, that means we would be running a 24 volt supply. So maybe... So where does that leave us? Well, the good points are that by doing away with the quick connect uh, power connector. They've eliminated one more point of contact, which means there's less possibility of screwing it up and melting your connector. Although you can still very easily melt it if you put your wires in wrong. We also have the upgraded bed output connector, the double D pack surface mount MOSFETs, which are gonna heat sink a little bit better because it uses the board surface for that. Although there isn't a whole lot of board surface, it's still better than nothing. Plus there's the large heat sink bar that goes across the top. And even though that's on the molded part of the package and not the actual heat sink tab, it will still do something. But the bad parts are, first off, they used an open source design, iterated it, and then didn't update any data. So we're at a loss with things like the fuses and we don't have the PC board, uh, PCB board layout. We can figure out what we need to figure out, but what a lot of these manufacturers don't realize is that in this type of a build community, you will get more business if your designs are accessible and hackable. So keeping things shrouded in mystery, especially with a bunch of industrious people with soldering irons, only adds a layer of frustration. Another downside for me is surface mount fuses. Anything that's meant to blow when something goes wrong should be replaceable. So those surface mount fuses are a real kind of eh point for me. I'm not happy with them. And I'm confused as to why they put such a beefy MOSFET on there if they kept the 11 amp fuse. Plus, we just have to kind of guess what the RDS on of the MOSFET is going to be based on the fact that the data sheets show curves at 10 volts and we're going to be applying a little less than five. But regardless of that, they should be in a range that's usable for us. Another thing I don't particularly like is the unified power input plug for both the bed and the board because it makes it much more difficult to fuse each of those separately. 
and it'd be nice to have a separate fuse for the bed. And in addition to that, you can't run separate voltages for your drivers and for your bed. So I won't give the board either a thumbs up or a thumbs down because you're gonna have to take all of those problems that they solved and the problems that they introduced and weigh those against the kind of machine that you're gonna build. Personally, since I bought the board, I'm gonna to try to use it for something if I can manage to straighten these header pins out, or I may just end up reusing the parts. But I think for my main machines, I'm still gonna stick with a, a decently built Ramps 1.4 with an upgraded power connector and MOSFET. So I hope that shed a little light on the mystery of the 1.6. You know the drill with these videos, click like and subscribe if you're into it and you want to see this kind of stuff more often. If you want to see me do more hardware reviews, this kind of stuff costs actual money. I do have support links down below. So the more interest there is there, the more I can afford to buy things like this just to test out. And regardless, if I get a new part in for one of my machines, I'll do up a little video and turn that information onto you guys anyway. So I hope that was helpful. And until the next video, get out there and make something awesome.